This is Seoul. Ten million people live in this massively busy, technologically advanced, and fucking delicious city. There are many great cities in the world. Oi, look, my, he's not here to see the bleeding castles. Before we got to Singapore, everybody said, oh, the one thing you must have is chili crab. It's kind of freaking mental. We need these at home. But after spending even just a handful of days in this truly exciting and fascinating place, it's become one of my Max and Chance's favorite places anywhere. And did I mention the food? Because this is a cooking show, so let's be honest. That's why we're here. We don't want to waste any time, and I have the perfect place to start that has everything. Cannot come to Seoul and not go to the Guangzhou Market. Everything is in there. It's fresh, it's perfect, it's packed, it's so exciting. Where do you see the stuff we're gonna have? If you could only go to one spot and eat one time, it's gotta be here. Guangzhou Market is the largest and oldest traditional market in Seoul and the perfect location for a huge variety of Korean foods all in one packed, bustling place. And there's not much more than I like than a huge Asian market. So let's go in and start working our way through. Chance, just get ready. You know the expression about jumping into the deep end? Well, let's begin there with some pork products. A snout with a tongue hanging out right there. We're gonna try some blood sausage, which I'm always okay with. No penis. I didn't say penis. Opinion. No, blood sausage with some pig head, but not, but not snout. I don't think. I hope not. You better get the snout. Okay, so uh, I have a selection of, of pig, pig head. So the pig head is meant to be. Oh, well, you can see how gelatinous it is. So this goes in this sauce. Yeah. She's saying yes. By the way, you wouldn't know it wasn't pork belly. You're gonna try some. I don't know. It's tremendous. He doesn't have to do anything he doesn't want to do. He has to do everything for the camera. And now blood sausage that I'm a fan of. But so there's this little, I'm guessing it's like a little salt. You have the blood sausage with the salt. And there's clearly rice in here. It's very salty. It's a little chewier than I imagined. But I gotta admit, it's pretty damn good. Wow. The point is this. When in Rome or when in Seoul, don't come here and go to Wendy's. Come here and, and have, I don't even know what these things are called, but this one, this one has got Chance's name written all over it. All right, we've got to move on. We've got mung bing pancake to eat, which I still think sounds horrible. Dear Korean Tourism Board, maybe you need to rename the mung bing pancake. All right, he pre I, I went for it. He pressured me into it. You went for the head? I went for the head. And? It's pretty damn good. It is like pork belly. It's like pork belly. Look, Just I'll prove it. Head. Just pork head. <laughs> pork okay. is pork. Pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good. You might see these two in some of the shots. That's Min and that's SG. They're our guides, our translators, and we're there to make sure we mostly stayed out of trouble. Oh, and now they've quickly become our friends too. Clearly no trip to the Guangzhou market would be complete without a stop at the Guangzhou chicken, and this is boneless garlic, sticky chicken. And you know the Koreans are known for their fried chicken. So the, hey, hey, I'm working. So the question is, is it worthy? It's crispy, it's sticky. Well, there's no getting mad at that. No getting mad at that. Be careful, and in the middle of everything, oh, there's a motorcycle. Because what? And only a couple feet away from the Korean fried chicken was Mr. O and his unbelievable dumplings. Shrimp dumplings, look at this guy. Look at 
Not a shrimp one, just a scallion. Oh, I love it. I don't know how to say uh, delicious. Mashita. 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 So it's the experiences that you get when you come to a place like this. I'm standing here, I'm getting a facial coming off the steamer that's making all these delicious things. He's making some of these fresh shrimp dumplings for us right now. I get them getting hot. Holy shit. But it's great. But look how beautiful it is and fresh. That's the thing about these markets. Everything is fresh. Everything. Okay, so it's about fresh. These guys are demos. This guy just made for us. I'm guessing sesame oil and soy, maybe? Soy? Soy? We're finding out what's in it. Well, in the meantime, I'll take a bite. Mm. The vinegar gives it a little punch. The soy mellows it out a little bit. But it's about the wrapper. It is so fresh, so light, so tender, and just steamed and so beautiful. And the tail, you can eat. Just like that. Mm. I'm sorry you're not here. So sorry. Boys, everybody eat now. Fresh, light, tasty. Little crunch from the tail. Mmm, that was damn good. Mr. Mr. O has been making his dumplings for 39 years. You do anything for 39 years, you're gonna do it well. I gotta say hi. Nice to meet you. Very ben, nice to meet you. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin. Sam. Uh, Chance? Yeah. Max. Max, there he is. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and our, our friends, they're making sure we don't get arrested. <laughs> Alrighty, let's keep this food train moving and see what else we can find. I got uh, 500 grams of gochugaru. See this? I have this in my refrigerator right now. This exact one, gochujang. But gochugaru is the pepper seasoning. I got this one. Wait, what are you obsessed with? So I have an obsession. Uh, I, I do like green onions and look, I am in green freaking scallion heaven. <laughs> look how big this is. I could, I could hurt somebody with these. I gotta start carrying this under the seat of my car in case I get in a fight. Tell us what it is. It's a drivable yogurt cart, yeah, refrigerated. Yeah. And here's where the person stands and drives. And that folds down for their little step. Wait, if you can refrigerate it, you can heat it. You could do tacos out of here, burgers. And just down the street, and only a little less crowded, we find a table at what has quickly become one of my favorite spots in Seoul. The multiple Bib Gourmand awarded Buchan Yukwe. Oh. A Bib Gourmand Award is given to restaurants with exceptionally good food at moderate prices. And trust me, when I tell you this was no exception, this was no exception. And the thing to have here is the beef tartare. So I wasn't expecting beef tartare to be a thing here. And it's a thing, a legitimate thing. This place is called Buchan. 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 And uh, we ate here last time, and it was incredible. And the way to start, okay, pretty much the way to start anything in uh, Seoul is with some soju. It's a, a barley uh, grain alcohol, and it's, uh, it's, it's delicious. And it would be rude of me not to pour for our hosts. Everybody? Say thank you in Korean. Before we eat, what would we say? We'd say, Gumbe. Gumbe, boys. The beginning of a delicious eating fest. The first one is bottoms up, right? Yeah. yeah always bottoms up. Wow. All right, so let's look at what we have. We have beef that they source from their own cows. Of course, a raw egg yolk, no whites, sesame seeds, and that's it. What you have around the outside is a little broth, and this is a sesame oil with salt in it, right? And so the key is we just mix this. And I think for people that aren't used to tartare, it can be a bit shocking, but it is so damn delicious. And in. Okay, this is not Max's thing, but I can't wait for Chansey to try it because you're gonna dig the hell out of it. Never had it. Chansey, do your thing. Listen, if you're only gonna eat one thing in Korea, I was gonna say it should be this, but it shouldn't. It should actually be absolutely everything. And that's the point. One of the busiest markets I've ever seen. Go on, boys. 
Boys. They're gone. Guangzhou. We're going to have mung bean pancake, amongst other things. By the way, mung bean sounds awful. It's amazing. If we hadn't just eaten at Buchan for the world's best tartare, the Michelin tartare, you could come down to this street, which is dedicated solely to tartare restaurants. And it's amazing. So right around the corner from the tartare place, Buchan that we ate at, is their original one. And once again, a giant line. Easily one of the food highlights for me in Seoul are the mung bean pancakes. They start by grinding the soaked beans into sort of a paste. Then they add some whole beans, veggies, or a host of other things. Still in the Guangzhou market, but now we're at Sunhine Bindai Duk for mung bean pancake. And check out what we're about to eat. We had this last time and I lost my shit. It is so good. So this is the traditional mung bean pancake. You saw this grinding outside. This is the one that I think everybody gets. I don't know if you can hear, but super crispy and tender in the middle. This is made of pork, not mung bean. They call it pork meatball, but it's pork done the same way, flattened and then in oil. So wonderful. And this is mung bean with shrimp. And you can see big, gorgeous pieces of shrimp in here. It's the best. So. The thing you have to do really is I think is start with the traditional mung bean. So you just try and break a piece. My chopstick skills are pretty good. I'm gonna suffer. I can do this. Steamy. That's what you want. Vegetables inside. Beautiful mung bean inside, outside. If you've ever been to somebody's house for Hanukkah and had potato latkes, this is like the world's greatest potato latke. It's crazy, it's so good. But so now a little bite of the other ones, right? Here's the pork one, small bite of this. I think it's my favorite. I honestly think it's my favorite. And then one bite of the shrimp, and then we stop so everybody can eat because everybody wants to eat. By the way, the place is really fast. You order and in like five minutes, it's here. Uh -huh. mm. Little vegetables, onions, vinegar, soy, I think. Wow. It's an eating frenzy that really should be. It is so worth it. And by the way, really inexpensive. You can eat an awful lot of food here for very little money. And why is my brow furrowed? Because I'm so happy right now. That's better. Come on, everybody. Let's eat. One of the best parts of travel for me are the unexpected moments. And as we were headed somewhere, we came across these big steaming pots and Mr. Lim. So Mr. Lim, wait, come right this way. Thank you, Mr. Lim. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Lim just gave us the croquettes that the member of BTS had and everybody went crazy for. So let's look inside. Oh, oh wow. boy. Yes. Is it meat? It's meat. Meat, noodles, chives. Okay. And it's, got, it's a little bit spicy. A little spicy. It makes me want to join a boy band. <laughs> mm. The outside is a little uh, like mochi. Anyone who comes to Korea has had tteokbokki, the popular Korean street food of rice cakes served in a spicy gochujang sauce. But now we're in the Singdangdong Tukboki town, a street of restaurants seemingly dedicated to the Juksuk Tukboki version. Think hot pot in style and crazy good. So we've chosen this restaurant called, sorry, Jongjong. It means last stop. And this is where you can have your Tukboki, but you cook it yourself. I've got it on great authority that it is insanely delicious. So why wouldn't we want to do this? We have no room for food left, but we're gonna go for it. Tukboki is typically just the tube-shaped rice cakes and spicy sauce served in little cups. But this must-have juksuk version is a delicious bubbling stew that just gets better and better as it simmers. A really important part of Korean food are tukboki. We'll put it on the screen because it's hard to spell. It's like long, wide rice noodles that are served often in a spicy broth. You can go to a lot of places on the street and they'll just make them and put them in a little cup and you walk around and eat them. Or you can come here to Tukboki Town that specializes in tableside Tukboki. So look what we've got inside here. Oh, 
We're losing some over the edge. Fried dumpling. Oh, turn it it's down. Spilling. Got it, I got it. Turn it down. Wait. So Min is helping me mix this a little bit. But look what you've got inside here, okay? So you've got a couple different types of noodles right here. Here's the takoki, the rice cakes, like this. You've got fried dumplings that are here. You've got uh, whole hard boiled eggs, you've got vegetables, you've got cabbage, you have carrot, and you mix everything in the most delightful way, and you eat. But the fun part is, when you're done, then they bring you fried rice to put in here and finish off with the broth. And we have eaten so much today, I'm not sure how we're getting through this. We're gonna make an attempt, because look at the magic. Think about fondue that you have in North America. This just kicks the hell right out of it. It's essentially a Korean version of hot pot. All right, so let's get some, put it in our bowls and see how we do. Okay, so with everything in here, all of these amazing pieces, the only thing left to do is get some, put it in a bowl and then consume it. Like I've not already consumed enough today, but this is what you do when you go away to a place that you don't go to very often. You eat everything constantly. Say no to nothing, right Chance? Right. Ask Chancey what he ate. I even ate a pig head. N not the whole head, the meat. And you know who didn't? The face is the most tender part. Which he had none of, none. So we'll start with some of these noodles. Oh man, and one of these guys, fried dumpling, and an egg. Should we have an egg? Let's have an egg. Wow, wow. We're gonna go with these noodles first. Oh, I wonder if they're gonna be hot. Pretty certain they're gonna be hot, but let's, it's bubbling, I hear it bubbling away beside me. Is it sticky rice noodles? Oh, glutinous sticky rice noodles. Insane, insane. Follow our lead, come here. So after it simmers a bit, it's time to have the takboki, and that looks like this. It's this white rice noodle. It has a little chew. It's a blank canvas, so whatever sauce is in here is gonna be in here, and that sauce with the perfect amount of spice is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm gonna say it maybe a thousand times in this video. This is the reason you go to other countries. This is the reason you eat OPF, other people's food, because it's eye-opening. We eat the same thing all the time at home. This changes everything. And then as if all that wasn't enough, when you get near the end, they add rice to the pot and turn it into the most magical fried rice ever. So the goal now, after she beautifully made the fried rice, is to get the bottom layer crispy. And that's what's happening. The heat's up, it's gonna sit here for a couple of minutes. It's about that bottom layer. With all like the soft rice on top and the, oh, I can't wait. How long do we wait, boys? Two minutes? Uh, Three minutes. Will she come turn it off? No. no, no. It's up to us. It's up to you. Beautiful skills, man. Beautiful skills. <laughs> you do this at home? Okay. We're still waiting for the bottom, right? Mm, oh my God, it is so good, it is so good. Look at, that could be notoriously difficult to clean if we just left it there, but we're not. What's the best way to get it off? Suffice it to say, we're in crispy tteokbokki rice heaven. Mm. We're now in the Myeongdong district, famously known for street food vendors. But today, we're at one of the most awarded and one of the busiest restaurants in Seoul, Myeongdong Kyoja for their famous knife cut noodles. And remember the Bib Gourmand Award? Well, Kyoja has received one every year for the past seven years. It's that good. It's a little mind blowing. This restaurant is how many floors? Five floors? It's like five floors. Every floor is packed like this. It's 11.30 Saturday morning. And these are a knife cut noodle. This place is famous for knife cut noodles. It's called Kyoza, Kyoza. And we have, look, in front of us, knife cut noodles, dumplings, and uh, all manner of deliciousness that, wow. It is breakfast of champions. Beautiful. Look at these little, gentle little dumplings. Flat dumplings. Wow, and check out these guys. And also check out the line. Each floor looks exactly like that. People waiting to come in. Okay, so a super gentle broth, but richly flavored. Oh and no wonder this place is packed. And you pay before you even sit down. There's no chance of a dine and dash here. It's packed, you could actually eat and split, nobody would know, and they don't want that. Knife cut, look how long. Now that's a noodle, huh? Kimchi delivery, coming in hot. Actually not hot, but coming in. 
Wow. So I apologize if I've said this already in this video because we're shooting out of order. But when a restaurant does one thing really, really well, or two things really, really well, you need to go. The people here, it's packed because of what they serve. Look at the menu. There's only three things on the menu. Three things. That's the kind of place you want to find. Okay, two things. One, maybe the best kimchi I've ever had. And two, when you're at the end, they bring a little bowl of rice that you do this with. You put it in your soup, this little mix, and then a little bite. I'm not even hungry and I can't stop eating. Cannot stop eating. Just in case you're wondering if this place is any good, it has won a Bib Gourmand Award 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Come on now. And then in the middle of the city, where you wouldn't expect it, is this beautiful river walk. I'm going to do a disservice by mispronouncing, but Chong Gate Chong. It's unbelievable. Huge buildings, skyscrapers all over the place. And this, people sitting, people walking, little baby rapids. You enjoy life. You just take in the center of this amazing 10 million person city. You gotta love this. And once again, one of my favorite parts of a city like this, street level is old school, tiny alley soul. And then you slowly pan up and what do you see? Beautiful contemporary skyscraper. It's fantastic. No visit to Korea would be complete without a Korean hot dog. This comes from Myeongland, and this is cheese. It's basically cheese on a stick with bits of french fries stuck to the outside and then cooked. And you eat it like this. Oh. And the white is sugar. Sugar on the outside too, which I wouldn't have thought would have been good but it is darn good. This is becoming popular in North America. In fact, we did our own version of this. I think this one's better. But uh, as I like to say, let's not stop here. There's a lot of food to eat in Seoul. You got sugar all over your face, by the way. I do, sorry. Okay, I don't know about you, but that was a ton of food in one day. So time for some soju, maybe a beer or two, and then more to eat. Are we going to Food Street? No, we're actually not going to Food Street, but I like the look of it. And yes, the goal was not Food Street, but we had to pass through it because who doesn't want to go through Food Street? You gotta bring this home. Kel, I've got new decorations for the house. So uh, as we walk down the street and we find ourselves in front of rotisserie chicken, car. I have an observation. There is so much food in this town. There is so much food in this town. If you like to eat, this is where you should come because it is everywhere. It is abundant. The smells, of course it smells amazing in front of this chicken, but the diversity, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Our goal though was a very cool beer bar that specialized in, well, I suppose beer. In case you were wondering, it's a pub. Look behind you. But what's good about it is that you could order from restaurants, eat anybody's food in the bar while you were enjoying their beer. And seriously, when it came to beer, they had pretty much anything you could want. But we weren't just gonna have random food at this beer bar. Our goal was fried chicken, Korean fried chicken. In fact, from three different restaurants, all being delivered to us right there. What a concept. I love this city. All right, well, let's get going. Here comes number one. It's crunchy, it's light. I think it's daikon. Mmm, wow. Here's their sauce. Oh, look, it's very different. Oh, but it's totally so good. Oh my God, I think it's better. It's way more flavor in this. You guys are gonna really like this one. They don't want you to get into their chicken easily. Whoa, what is this? This is like little baby thighs. I think this is boneless. Do you see this dripping? Do you see that? Ready for a bite? I can't believe this is dripping. It's insane. So we're on our way down to a reservation we canceled because we thought we were going to be up there and now we're not going to be up there. We're going to be down here. So it's Korean barbecue that we're excited about. So now we'll or put our name in and we'll wait a little bit. But the benefit is we get this walk down this little alley. Maxi boys, turn around and show them. Down backwards <laughs> it's the best. And there's our boys right there. Boys, there they are. Hey, it's a busy uh, Seoul street. 
It's uh, 635 at night. We're going for uh, some eats in the Myeongdong and uh, we're all hungry. Korean barbecue was on the list since before we even left for Seoul. And Min and SG took us to the highly regarded Yuk Tong Ryung. It was three floors. And as we went up each floor to the top where we ate, each floor was packed. People love their Korean barbecue. And because you're cooking over delicious charcoal, each table has its own built-in ventilation system in the form of a flexible hose. You just pull it down over the cooking food to capture the smoke. And the first thing that showed up were the condiments we'd used to enhance anything that was going on the grill. And now to the thing that preceded almost all of our meals in Seoul, a somake. A somake is a combination of soju, the fermented grain alcohol, and Korean beer. And after pouring some of each into a glass, a fast whack with a spoon straight down brings them together. And we loved those. The restaurant is known for serving the famous Korean black pork. It comes from Jeju Island, a Korean resort island about an hour or so flight from Seoul. And so rib meat, with bone goes on the grill first because well look it's definitely impressive but also it's going to take the longest to grill and then at a certain point they cut the meat off the bone let it finish on the grill and of course i wanted to try my hand at the cutting but hey decided to leave it up to them but of course you're not just here for the pork there's gorgeous king trumpet mushrooms and a small dish of garlic in oil softening away on the grill but let the real eating begin and we try the pork just by itself first to appreciate its true flavor and that charred and meltingly delicious bite only made me want more. So then you try it with the accompaniments and it continues to get better. And then kimchi jjigae, a kimchi stew showed up with a separate burner. Oh, and this was filled with pork belly and kimchi, of course. There's green onion, tofu, and of all things, canned tuna. And when we say it was wonderful, we say it was wonderful. Then there was a cold salad with veggies, egg, samjang, and noodles that they cut up with a pair of scissors before serving. And now, look at us. We're all eating, we're drinking, we're enjoying, we're laughing. We're doing what just comes so naturally in almost any Korean restaurant. Look, of course you go out to a restaurant for the food. But here in Korea, in addition to the eating, there's this important emphasis on the social aspect and the camaraderie. This is not just eating. This is delicious living. Let's summarize. What have we learned from our trip to Seoul? We've learned that we love the people. We've learned that street food here is out of this world. We've learned that we can get chance with just a little bit of pushing to eat pig face. And we've learned that this is one country and one city that we are dying to come back to again and again. Okay, for Max, and again.